Hi, uh, hello again in the course of business planning. In, and this time we are going into activity number 10, uh, which consists in structuring the so-called passive side of your capital base in the business. Uh, to explain the basic vocabulary, when I use the term capital base, it means the total capital that you plan to use in your business and that you will be de facto using in your business. Uh, your capital base is usually expressed in a financial statement, in a financial calculation called the balance sheet which has two sides. Uh, those two sides uh, should rigorously mirror each other. There is the passive side and the active side. In this video, we are focused on the passive side, or in other words, we are focusing on the sources of capital. So on the ways you want to acquire capital for your business. So we go into that PowerPoint presentation as usually I will be showing and talking and it will be interesting. So the essential idea, the essential idea that we have uh, when it comes to the passive side of our capital base in a business. People finance businesses uh, because they expect a reward, because they expect a return on investment. and. Uh, Historically, by let's say by sheer experience and business practice, two essential types of contracts have emerged and still are there in the market as it comes to investing money in a business. There is the so-called equity contract on the one hand and there is the debt liability contract on the other hand. Put in slightly different wording, it means that people can either directly invest in the business and take like a participation and become business partners or they can just lend money to the business in exchange of a preset interest uh, on that money that they lend. So the equity contract assumes that investment in the given business is a direct participation in all the aspects of the business, risks and rewards alike. The investor becomes a partner in business with the possibility to convert his share or shares into tradable securities and those securities are called shares or stock. The debt liability contract, on the other hand, is based on the general idea of a bank loan. By the way, it is frequently signed with banks. So investors just lend capital to that business that they want to invest in, in exchange of a promise of a preset interest. Uh, that type of investment is also possible to convert into tradable securities. Those securities are called notes if they are short term, up to one year of maturity, or they are called bonds if they are long term, more than 12 months. Now we go into an important concept, uh, important to understand the way of financing a business, the concept of incorporation. When you incorporate officially a business, so when you give it that legal body or corpore in Latin, you give it uh, the so-called moral personality. So this, this incorporated business becomes a separate legal moral person and that moral person uh, has like a, a capital account of its own. The bottom line is that when you incorporate a business, that business can borrow money on its own account and your liability for the borrowings or for the debts of an incorporated business are essentially equal uh, to the amount of money you have invested in the equity of the business. Uh, mind you, there are exceptions. There are certain types of business partnerships when at least one of the partners is fully liable for all debts, 
Fully means with all the assets he or she has. Huh? Yet, in most cases, in incorporated businesses, each business partner is liable just with the amount of equity they have invested. Now, that creates incentives and opportunities for a mechanism called leverage. So it pays off to create a workable, viable business with a reasonable business plan and business concept because that business can have its separate borrowing capacity and therefore it, uh, 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 that business allows its owners to like leverage their borrowing capacity, grants their additional uh, access to debt capital. The borrowing capacity of a business is essentially uh, the money that lenders are willing to extend as credit and the borrowing capacity in business cases is based on credibly substantiated future income of that business, possibly backed by some collateral assets that can further secure the deal. So, first of all, we calculate the borrowing capacity of our operations. And this is something that I encourage you to practice, just to mess around with those numbers to see what it gives. Uh, so, take your calculations of operational income from activity number 8, from activity which was entitled Estimate the Operational Financials of Your Business. Simulate a situation or imagine a situation that uh, when your business comes to being predictably profitable and calculate then that operational income given in that formula here, Q so, or quantity multiplied by price minus unitary variable cost minus fixed costs. Take the total stream of that operational income uh, and then take like the half of it, 50%. Why 50%? Because we can roughly assume in a typical business that 50% of the operational income will go to financing the amortization of your fixed assets, will go to paying, uh, to paying the interest on your loans, and just the remaining 50% can be used either to pay back the the body capital or, or, or the, the so-called principal capital of a loan or can be pocketed by the owners of the business as their dividend. Anyway, you do this calculation here shown in that formula in red. Uh, you do this. Debt, the maximum debt that you can contract to finance your operations, so that you can credibly contract to finance your operations, it is half, so 0 0.5, times the operational income over, over the number of years you are planning for, divided or corrected for by that part, 1 plus r power m. m is the number of years we uh, expect to take a loan for. Usually when we do this type of planning in a business plan we take five years or no more than five years. And R is the typical interest rate on business loans that you have in the banking market currently. So the result of that calculation in red roughly yields the borrowing capacity of your operations of your planned operation. So the amount, uh, the amount of money you can reasonably safely borrow from a bank. Now I must reduce the size of that slide a little bit and I'd better go to the other side of that slide as well. Uh, let me make it slightly bigger to make it more readable because we will be talking about an important rule of thumb in business planning, the 50-50 principle. Uh, there is that principle which says that without uh, like going into fine-tuning your financial strategy, 
you can leverage your business with the credit which is up to 50% of the total capital you use. This is the 50-50 principle. There are exceptions in real cases. For example, if you look into the financial accounts of Netflix or Airbus, you will see that they have a much larger financial leverage. So debt may, makes much more than 50% of their total capital. Yet, for the purposes of like your own business planning, for rational business planning, you can take that 50-50 principle as quite workable. So once you have done that calculation uh, suggested in the previous slide, so once you have calculated the debt, you can safely contract over five years. So here is that exponent five. You can assume that equity capital will mirror or will be equal to that value of debt. So you multiply it by two, you multiply the debt by two to calculate the total capital you can have in your business. And as you multiply by two a value which is computed with the 0.5, you just naturally kick both the 0.5 and the two from the out of the equation and you land with that. So in other words, you can reliably recruit for your business for your operations, as much capital as is given by your expected operational income over five years and correct it with the current interest rate on bank loans. You can recruit more capital if you invest uh, in your business in like typical hedging assets, for example, in real estate. You can go back to section devoted to risk assessment to review that concept of hedging and of hedging assets. Now, the last set of questions that you should ask yourself are questions about uh, power that you want in exchange of your, of your money. So here is the title of the slide, the power you want in exchange of your money. You need to ask yourself two things. First of all, how much of your own savings are you ready and willing to invest in the equity of the business you want to create? And there, my recommendation, be painfully realistic. Don't overshoot. Investing all your savings in a business is not necessarily the best idea under the sun. Usually, as a new business is naturally a risky venture, take like 20% of your, of your savings Put, that, uh, put them in their business and keep the rest safely, okay? Uh, now, the next question is how much capital control over that business you want to acquire by investing those savings? Because essentially the greater percentage of equity you have in a business, the more decisional power you have. So here is that subtle balance. You can invest more and have more decisional power and risk more, or you can invest less and then have less decisional power. So do those like private intuitive maths for you. So the amount of savings you want to invest, the amount of power you want to have in the equity and show and just see how it matches with that principle that equity should equal debt according to the 50-50 principle, which should be equal to like half of your operational income over five years corrected with the interest rate. Check if there are any hedging assets you would like to, to invest in and then decide finally about the capital you want to master from your possible business partners. Now, as usually, I make a demo with my own business case. So my own business concept, which I am working through all those activities in this course. Uh, it is uh, the concept of manufacturing small wind turbines and small water turbines in uh, possibly in vertical integration with operating power installations or in horizontal integration with manufacturing other industrial goods. All in all, if you refer to my 
previous uh, calculations with that concept, with my previous demonstrations, you will see like a chain of reasoning which starts with the market research and then goes up to the, uh, to the estimation of circulating capital. Anyway, at the end of the day, my operational income that I expect over five years of operations is that 24.4 millions of euros. That's the five year stream of operational income. And I assume a little bit conservatively that the typical interest rate on business loans would be 10%. It could be lower if I am really a pain in the ass, if I negotiate really tough with those bankers. Yet, uh, let's say the, the so-called good morning value that those bankers will tell me will be 10% of uh, uh, on a typical business loan for a small business. And I do the math in this case. So I take, as you can see, that stream of operational income. I correct it with a 10% interest, year, uh, interest rate with the assumption that it is over five years. This is that exponent five, which gives me roughly a little bit more than 50 million euro. And that 50 million euro, 15 million 164,628, this is the capital base of my business, which is possible to infer logically from my expected operational results. Here, uh, I can split it half-half into debt and equity. And just to remind you, just as a sort of uh, interesting detail, in previous section, especially when I was talking about my goals and about risks, about planning, I have that little obsession that I want to use a lot of land directly controlled by me uh, as a hedging asset in their business. And my idea is that uh, I would apport my part of that 7.5 billion equity of the business as some sort of subsidiary claims on that land. And the land in itself, I would acquire it privately beforehand. Okay. That was both a succinct presentation of theory and a demonstration of how you can quickly structure your capital base from the passive side. So from the standpoint of the sources where the capital is supposed to come from. As usually, have fun with science and have fun with life. Bye.